um, we make our partnership extremely affordable. But nonetheless, we ask for uh, whatever financial arrangement a diocese can take care of, and people are, are asking for an accounting, and they should, okay? So if they're paying $300 per institution, $400 per institution, or some other flat rate, the financial office is gonna say, how many people are using it? How effective? How long are they engaged? Are we finding conversions taking place in our parishes? Are our school teachers actually embracing the Catholic mission, okay? I just want you to understand where I'm going with today, and I'm going to ask this. Uh, I want you to hold your questions, please, until the end, because it's. I think I'll probably answer quite a few, um, but if you could just hold, um, make notes so you don't forget your questions, and then at the end, I'm gonna ask my colleague also, Amy Piccano, who has been part of our web team, and she is uh, more of an expert on the technology side than I am, but we have a few things we wanna show you that most of you have never seen before, and we're unveiling um, several things, okay? So, um, I just wanna emphasize over and over again, we're trying to be as bilingual as possible. I'm not there yet, but I'm trying to present as much to you in both English and in Spanish, so we have one goal. Our one goal is forming those who form others in the faith. That means, and I often have to explain this when I go into dioceses, that means we are not replacing the catechesis that is taking place in pre-K through 12, okay? What we are doing is we're forming y'all, and we're forming those who form others in the faith. I just wanna make sure that's really clear too. We have a new, um, uh, a new document that's going to be coming out very soon. Parts of it you might have seen in some material that we've given uh, throughout the week. Um, this new document is going to focus our ministry in three areas. Uh, the first one, and all of these you've, are terms that you've seen before, but I wanna make sure you understand that we are having this focus. First is accompaniment. Now for us, we wanna make sure that it's really clear our approach is not a sprint, it's a marathon. Now, there are multiple dioceses here whom I serve, and when I have accompanied you, we always listen because your pace, just like in a marathon, your pace is different than somebody else's pace, okay? So the pace in Los Angeles is different than it is in Victoria, right? Uh, the pace in Indianapolis is different than it is in Fort Worth. Uh, the pace in Lansing, no. Columbus, I'm sorry. The pace in Columbus is quite different than it is in, uh, in Cal but where, what diocese? Oh, Stockton, y'all are together, right. It's different than it is Oklahoma City. I mean, these, the contrast, I'm gonna show you some contrasts up here between the pacing here. And this is, for us, the accompaniment means we are conditioning ourselves to pace with you, okay? And that's so, so important for us. But this is not a quick fix. And if you're looking for a quick fix, we're not gonna be able to help. Okay, uh, our second ministry focus is mentorship. And we use the word mentorship very much, you'll see it all throughout all of our work, but it really is forming disciples, forming disciples of Jesus Christ in the Holy Spirit for the church. I like to use that word discipleship a lot. It means the same thing as mentorship, okay? And then our third focus is the kerygma. And I realize um, many of you who are leaders know exactly what the kerygma is. But you know then as leaders, many of the people who you are forming have no idea what the kerygma is, okay? Um, so that's what we're here to do, is to help you make that, again, a very common phrase, a very common term, okay. Um, I think it was beginning of the year, let's say January. We were doing strategic planning that is the, what's called the, so the Catechetical Institute has two parts. We have a workshop development team and we have an outreach team. So I am part of the outreach team. 
The outreach team, which also includes our deputy director, Dr. Bill Keimig, myself, um, our web team, and uh, Mary Brewer, who is the one on the phone. She, when you call the CI, she's the one who's there. Uh, Gabby Duo is also part of our web team. Um, uh, Katrina Herlambang is especially in Asia. Um, and then the Holy Spirit sending us somebody else to do the northern part of the United States and Canada. The reason I mention all this is we did strategic planning in February, listening back to the field. And we went through over and over and over again what we were hearing. The question about what distinguishes us from everybody else who's providing formation allowed us to get to these five points. The Franciscan difference is this. We collaborate, not compete with your current formation structures. We want to make that so, so very clear. There is no competition uh, for us in the church with anything that you're doing. Number two, we empower you, not unemploy you. Number three, we provide a customizable, long-term process of accompaniment. We don't use cookie-cutter approaches at all. You don't have to fit into us. We fit to you. Three, uh, four, excuse me. We are practical. When we say practical, we mean practice. Um, uh, we are very oriented towards practices. And then number five, we are field oriented. So we listen to the field. We want to make the communications loop complete. Um, and we are constantly listening to the field and adjusting. So franciscanathome.com is our learning management system. But we are not an online formation. We are not online formation. We are disciple making. We use online formation to support disciple making. OK? Unfortunately, sometimes it gets turned around the other way. Now, the reason it's going to feel like that is because if you have accounts on franciscanathome.com, you know how robust it is. It's the biggest, it's the largest, it's the widest, it's the deepest formation program in the world. And we have spent a lot of time, a lot of expertise, a lot of money um, doing it. But it never goes ahead of us. It always serves us. We believe that there are four characteristics specifically to our online learning system called franciscanathome.com. One, it's generously affordable. We are committed to financial flexibility. And we will work with your unique diocesan needs for all onboard partnership. For example, although standard pricing is $400 per institution, we adjust for financial hardship, missionary circumstances, parish clustering, geographical challenges, et cetera, so that your whole diocese may receive the gift, the gift of forming others to encounter Christ personally. Yes, sometimes it is a financial gift. Sometimes you come to us with a need. You say, Mark, we need a missionary rate. We can't swing it right now. Our diocese is in bankruptcy. Um, we have our, <clears throat> excuse me, we're still coming out of COVID. Things are still limited. Uh, whatever the circumstances are, we will work with you and we make it work for you. But the gift I'm talking about here is not just the financial gift. We're talking about the gift of everyone who comes into ministry. It might be that they haven't articulated it, but everyone who's in ministry answered a call. And the call was, come, follow me. Spend time with me. And so the gift of the CI is, we're giving you the time to be intimate with the Lord. That's what our gift is. Because we don't want it to be a way in which you are being used we actually want it to help you use what's there so you can come to the Lord better. Uh, number two, it's completely accessible. All of your teachers, leaders, ministry team leaders may receive unlimited access to our online formation workshops at no additional cost and from the comfort of their own homes and offices if they wish. Everybody, everybody gets it. We never charge per person when a diocese partners with us. OK? Sometimes the diocese doesn't partner. Anybody can get a personal subscription at Franciscan at Home anywhere in the world where they have internet access. 
but for partner dioceses especially, we want to make it available to everybody. Number three, we are deeply diverse. Our true video workshops are presented by seasoned presenters from different walks of life, countries, languages, <laughs> ministry areas. Their rich and unique perspectives help you both to train effectively and to nurture spiritually, all involved in passing on the Catholic faith. Um, when we say true video workshops, I never, ever, <coughs> excuse me, I never use the phrase watch a workshop. That's passive. We participate in a workshop. It is true, all of our workshops have video segments. But I don't even watch a video segment. I listen to a video segment. Active listening. Because actually, if you have participated in any of our workshops, you know that we ask you to print off the uh, sheet, the worksheet, before it. Because sometimes, there are fill in the blanks as you're going through the workshop, right? Or those of you who know Dr. Bergsma, you're doing diagrams. <laughs> you're doing diagrams as you do his workshops, right? OK, all right. And then number four, highly flexible. This formation can be adopted, or adapted, excuse me, to a ministry certification process, ongoing formation or continuing education, volunteer formation, and group studies. I really want you to now, I'm going to blow, I would like you to blow apart everything that you think about concerning certification. And the way I want you to blow it apart is not to upend and make people anxious in your diocese. What I want you to think about is the gift, again, of acknowledgement of a person's time, energy, uh, themselves, in their formation. So that certification is not necessarily a hoop to jump through. OK, this is a flexibility room. I know, I understand. OK, but we're not jumping through hoops in this room. What we're doing is we're acknowledging that it is a great gift for you to take time with the Lord and to form yourself. The way we're going to do that is we're going to make sure you get a certificate. OK? Do you understand? I'm trying to get a little bit broader about the notion of certification and other forms of recognition. We're going to talk about that a little bit later on. OK. I am presuming right now there are some in this room who are veterans at using Franciscan at home, and there are some in this room who are complete rookies. OK? So I'm going to pitch to the rookie, but come along with me, and I'm going to, the veterans in here, you're going to see some things that you've never seen before, OK? So for the rookie, everybody goes to franciscanathome.com. Don't do it right now. Just listen to me. And while you're there, I especially want to introduce you to my friend, Franklin Allen Quinton. Franklin Allen Quinton is in the Archdiocese of Toronto. Very first formation event or mentor training that we did, he asked all kinds of questions. He was always raising his hand, OK? So we created a button just for him. It's called FAQ. <laughs> OK, I think he's doing just fine these days. I don't know, OK? But so some people call it frequently asked questions. But anyhow, so the FAQ button is really, really important for you to teach anybody else. And we are working to make that a really accessible button. We're working on making it better. And if you want to do it in Spanish, we also have it all available in Spanish. Well, not all available, sorry. But we're working towards getting the entire system completely bilingual. We are working really hard to get to that point, OK? Right now, our FAQs, our uh, preguntas y requestas, unfortunately, are still in English, right? But we're working to get it in Spanish. Oh, OK. All right. So we're in process. But we're getting, we're getting really close, OK? I want to show some general statistics for you all. Maybe you receive this in a handout, maybe not. I'm going to share it with you right now um, because we're pretty excited about what's going on. As of, uh, let's see, beginning of this month, uh, beginning of July, we had 37,000 plus disciples on franciscanathome.com. I also like to use the word learners. Uh, learners is actually the term 
in our system that we use most frequently, but I like to use the word disciples. And you notice we serve those engaged in the widest variety of ministries with trained local mentors, local, local mentors. When I started four years ago, I came from the perspective of what's called the cult of distant experts. I've got a PhD. I know everything, and you are going to pay me really, really well so that I can teach you, and I run away here with your money, but you never change, right? How many times do we create huge events? Sometimes conversion takes place, but oftentimes they, there's no follow-up, right? We, we get frustrated because we have 50,000 people come to this big, wonderful uh, conference center in our town for this amazing Eucharistic Congress. I'm anticipating something here now, okay? And they don't show up at Mass the following week. Because what's happened is they were not accompanied. They attended a big event and since it took place in the convention center where they're also doing the basketball games and the hockey games, they come with the attitude of, I'm going to a sports event. This is just Catholic sports, okay? And when they go to a Catholic sports event, they get super excited. Enthusiasm runs real high. We love the enthusiasm, just like Pentecost, okay? We got to have the enthusiasm. But... Because there's no accompaniment structure, no mentoring structure locally, they'll show up and then after that they go off, off the radar. We all know what happens in RCIA, right? And the reason it doesn't happen in RCIA is because we don't expect the team to continue to mentor afterwards. Or the confirmation sponsor is it, we have it in their mind that you're only necessary for the receiving of the sacrament of confirmation, and then they don't know what they're supposed to do afterwards. Well, what they're supposed to do afterwards is to be the lifelong mentor, to be the lifelong accompanist of the person who they just brought to Christ. Okay? All right. So that's what, for us, that's why local mentors were not a cult of distant experts. Okay. The most diverse offering of customizable ministry tracks that are composed of true video workshops, free semi-monthly webinars. So as long as you have an account, you're going to get an email from us inviting you to the webinars. They have been amazing. Any of you who have participated in them, they're live. A workshop is not live, just to make sure that's clear. Workshop is recorded. We spend, for one hour of video, we spend 100 hours in post-production to make it beautiful, um, attractive, engaging. Webinars are live. Uh, we don't do any makeup. You know, Bill makes mistakes. I make mistakes. Somebody else. Okay. All right. And, and, and an international guild to overcome isolation and discouragement. If you don't know about the guild, we really want you to know about the guild. Um, because how many of us in ministry have ever felt alone? Anybody here? Okay. All right. So go ahead right now. Just give yourself a big hug. We're all here together. Okay. We are in this together. Many of you who've come to the lunches that we've offered for diocesan officials uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then today, you're going to come out of that lunch, and one of the most important things that will happen to you is you'll say, oh, somebody's got the same problems I do. And you've never heard that before. You thought you were in this all by yourself, right? We want to avoid that, and that's what the Guild helps to do. Okay, we have 200-plus True Video Workshops, we're trying to put out at least one new one every month. Um, we offer online, unparalleled ministry formation based on uh, workshops based on the Catholic adult learning model. You might or might have never heard this before. Um, Dr. Willie and I discussed this. We've been kind of working on it for a while. Last year, he gave approval for me to say this publicly. So the Catholic adult learning model is based on these five action verbs. Trusting, not doubting. Tasking, not testing. Praying, not faking. Giving, not getting. Growing, not shrinking. So we're going to talk about that in just a little bit. I'm going to show you how it all fits together. Um, and a new workshop is added every month. We have, it says 115 plus, we have 120 partnered dioceses today. 
120 partner dioceses. We've received letters from bishops of Roman Catholic dioceses, eparchs of Eastern Catholic jurisdictions throughout the world to request support for evangelization and catechesis according to the local ordinaries vision. Some local ordinaries are promulgating uh, new pastoral letters on evangelization, catechesis, discipleship. We are there to serve his vision and not him to serve us. And then uh, we have, we're in over 35 uh, countries that we can say out loud. Um, there are all kinds of other things that we serve that we don't want to mention out loud. Um, we're headquartered here at Franciscan University in Steubenville, Ohio, but we serve the people of God throughout the world. And right now, we offer workshops, complete, complete workshops in four languages, English, Spanish, Latvian, and Slovakian, uh, but we are working on more languages. Um, you can go to franciscanathome.com. You'll see on the left-hand side of your dashboard where it says Start Learning, all of the names of these ministry tracks. What you might not see unless you really go deep into it, is in fact how they're composed. So we compose them of courses of study, and then within the courses of study are workshops, and then within the workshops are segments, and then in each segment is a video and a task, okay? And it's that hierarchy that is really helpful. And by the way, um, I'm giving this slide presentation to you. I have about three or four slide presentations. If you, would like to introduce better the CI in your own diocese. Um, you bring us in for free. All you have to do is pay for our travel, lodging, food. We will come and do any formation events for you for free. But the reason I say that with the slide presentation is maybe you need to refresh things in the diocese and you can use some of the information. Uh, I'm, I don't want you to overwhelm anybody with all this stuff. I have some other really short, um, nice uh, slides for somebody who doesn't know anything about Franciscan, and you can share that with them. Uh, I think I sent that to you. If I didn't, let me know, okay? Or anybody else uh, that I serve, anybody? Yes? Do you think that is because possibly one of them is a parent? Oh, yeah, absolutely, yes. No, 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 That's. I'm glad you asked. I go to multiple parishes. Uh, I Yes, I am. Uh, if, if I can fit it into my schedule, I will. A lot of times what will happen is I will try to arrange uh, events in a diocese for the diocese, and I will add on to that events in parishes. Okay, I really like to do it that way. All right, so this gives you an idea. Right now, right now, as of today, we have 16 ministry tracks presently available on franciscanathome.com. Uh, the one track that's sequestered is the ongoing diaconal formation track. We make that separate because it's actually a five-year uh, approach, whereas all of these others don't have any years attached to them. Um, and we actually have a separate pricing um, for the ongoing diaconal formation track. What we are working on very diligently and hoping to have come out really, really soon is the marriage renewal ministry track and the educating in Christ track. Those two are really top priorities for us uh, at this point. We're working on the Antiqua Ministerium, um, but you know we're not going to come out with anything until there's official promulgation, okay? Uh, a special needs ministry track we're also working on uh, diligently, and then ultimately we want the culture of life, diocesan officials, priest the renewal and music ministry tracks as well, okay? So um, the partnership, a partnership, if you're not partnered with us, if you are partnered with us, if you haven't heard all of these, here's what I want to summarize right now. So partnership means one, unlimited learners, unlimited disciples. A diocese can allow an unlimited number of disciples from subscribing parishes and schools to become learners on franciscanathome.com. Two, a mentoring structure with free help from the CI outreach team. A diocese can train and deploy local mentors. Train and deploy local mentors. franciscanathome.com provides structures of accountability for mentor-disciple relationships. We'll talk, I'll show that to you in just a moment. Three, a stronger community. A diocese can use workshops in groups, ministry teams, school faculties to foster cohesion, trust, and a shared vision. Four, customizable formation. A diocese may create and maintain a landing page on franciscanathome.com 
With help from the CI outreach team, a diocese may build custom ministry tracks from the CI library of 200 plus workshops and then regular feedback. That is the new data I'm going to show you today. A diocese may view real-time reports on franciscanathome.com to track learner disciple engagement and to assess the effectiveness and the formation. The regular feedback, which is what I want to focus on today. We've live, listened for seven years. We serve the church throughout the world. Our primary focus is the United States, which we want to be a significant influence in the world for our Heavenly Father's kingdom of justice, love, and peace. The U.S. can be an influence in a lot of ways. This is our reason for being an influence. Strategic evaluation. Our CI outreach team focused on the quantitative and qualitative data generated up to January 2023. Partnership successes and failures recalled what seemed to have met our goal and objectives as well as what did not and best practices. Based on these activities, we think that we have identified best practices for formation at this time and in this place. Right now, best practice dioceses are these. Number one spot goes to Columbus. Um, Columbus is, uh, really has been doing amazing things. And the data that I really want to show you is in the last column. This is the percentage of their learners who are active, meaning they have engaged the system within the last four months. 72% is a high, it's the highest percentage of engagement on our system. And just think about this for a moment. In your own ministry, if you had 72% of the people coming to all of your events actively engaged in their formation, wouldn't you say praise the Lord? Yes? Okay, so go ahead, say it. Praise the Lord. All right. So Columbus is leading in the area of their schools, but... I just found out uh, with Marlon and sister, the parish side is now going to be beefed up so that the parish side and the school side can work together on this. So you'll notice the number of learners they have right now is 1,516. Um, and I'm gonna tell the active column here in uh, just a little bit why there are other numbers there. And then the number of dormant learners, number of active presently. Green Bay, Wisconsin, um, just amazing. There is a webinar on Franciscan at Home under the FAQs in which we um, interviewed the team in the Diocese of Green Bay, Wisconsin. If I had to present to you a diocese with what I would consider the most fruitful, cooperative diocesan ministry, it would be Green Bay right now. They have a bishop, Bishop Ricken, who um, has said, Everyone listen to the Holy Spirit. He has given them a unified vision, and everybody works together. And all egos are checked at the door. That's, you know how difficult that is in ministry, okay? It's usually the ego that brings us down. And in the Diocese of Green Bay, and by the way, these dioceses, please contact them if you've got questions. And you're not, if you're not part of the diocese, contact them. They'd love to share with you their best practice. Uh, Baltimore, Maryland. I mentioned schools. I have schools underlined here, too, because what Baltimore just recently did is they had started back in 2017 with parishes, but recently in 2021, they switched 100% AOB, we call it, all on board with their schools. And they're the ones, it's the schools right now who are really leading what's going on in Baltimore. That's why they have such a high percentage right now of active. Yes? Everybody. Uh, the, so good, I'm really glad you asked that. So school personnel, school personnel. We don't have any data that separate parents from everybody else, but that was a really good question, thanks. Lansing, Lansing, where's Lansing? There we are, Lansing. Lansing's got a very high percentage here too, 61%, good job, Lansing. Um, that's wonderful. Trenton, New Jersey right now is running 60% active. Oma Thibodeau, uh, uh, does anybody know where Oma Thibodeau is? It's south of New Orleans. South of New Orleans, you didn't think there was anything south of New Orleans, did you? <laughs> okay, Oma Thibodeau is south of New Orleans. Uh, they have all their schools on right now. They're going to be bringing the parishes on in about a year, I think. 
Um, notice they're at 59% engagement right now. And uh, have any of you survived a hurricane before? Oma Thibodeau, Oma Thibodeau has survived two hurricanes. And they are, I mean, I'm just so amazed by their resilience uh, in that diocese. Uh, Madison, Wisconsin is at 54%. Pittsburgh, now, Pittsburgh is actually number one in the number of active learners, okay? Percentage-wise, they have 53% who are active right now. But notice how many learners they have signed up in Pittsburgh. Now, the reason I want to mention this especially is the approach of Columbus is not the approach of Pittsburgh at all. And you can look, anybody in here can look at their approaches by simply going to franciscanathome.com, go to the Partnering Dioceses drop-down menu, and look at the landing page for these different dioceses. The Columbus approach is so different than the Pittsburgh approach. And the Oma Thibodeau approach is so different than the Trenton, New Jersey approach. You know your diocese. We don't but we listen to help you do it best, okay? And uh, I'm just showing you, there is no cookie cutter way in which it works. So for us to share with you best practices is actually going to have to be very customizable. We'll share those. And then uh, the top 10 here, uh, Steubenville and New Orleans. Okay, again, New Orleans, even though we have all parishes and schools, it's really the schools that are kind of leading things in New Orleans also, okay. So the real-time evaluation tools that are now available, which you may have never seen before, are on the diocesan officials learner progress page. And the learner progress page, I'm gonna take Columbus here because they're in our number one spot. Dr. Teresa Resinella is the one who has really organized uh, the partnership with the Diocese of Columbus. So when she logs in, this is her dashboard. Any diocesan official, well, anybody with a learner has a dashboard, okay? But as a diocesan official, she has a diocesan official's dashboard, which means she has a tab here for learners. If you are just in a parish or just in a school and you're not a diocesan official or you're not even an institutional leader, you don't have a learner's tab. We're going to look at the learner's tab, the progress tab here. There are now four real-time evaluation tools. Okay, this is in your handout. The four real-time evaluation tools, the ones that we had were the demographic report and the workshop evaluation report. What we've recently added are the cumulative data report and the individual learner data report. We did this in response to desire from the field, especially from schools, schools that needed data for their accreditation. They needed to know the levels of engagement of their teachers and how many of them had actually finished workshops in formation. Those data are now available using these other tabs. But I want to show you just really quickly what a demographic report looks like. This is a screenshot. And in the Diocese of Columbus, right now the demographics are pretty similar to most states in the United States in terms of age, and in terms of uh, gender. Um, the ethnicity here is not necessarily uh, the average in the United States. Um, there, there's a little bit more variety. Columbus tends to be a little bit more, um, um, uh, it's not as heterogeneous. It's more homogeneous. Um, and then the educational level, that's pretty close to the educational level that we get across the board in the United States. Okay, so that's just demographic data in case you're curious. The cumulative data report is the one that's brand new. Now I'm just showing you the top of the page. I'm gonna show you the bottom of the page in just a moment because it's the bottom of the page that you may wanna see most often if you're a diocesan official. So the cumulative data report, you'll just see at the very beginning here, they have right now these particular customized tracks. These are customized for their Diocese of Columbus, and you'll see how many have started and how many have completed, okay? So it just gives you raw data. It doesn't say who it is yet. That's a different tab, all right? And then at the very bottom of this page, I'm gonna show you where I pulled 
the active learners versus the dormant learners, and that's something that you really want to take a look at. But let me go to the uh, third tab now, the individual learner data report. So if I'm looking for a particular institution, so let's say I'm with All Saints School, and we've got accreditation coming up, and we've got to generate data to give to our uh, accreditation, our visiting team, et cetera. I'm just going to mention this real fast. I'll show you in a moment. At the very bottom, you can export all of these data as a CSV file. Now, as a diocesan official, um, you have access to any of this. So you could simply look up All Saints School, use that as a filter, and then export as a CSV file all of the data for All Saints School. Or you could even be more specific about a particular track. So let's say in schools, you've got two different tracks at least. One track is all teachers coming in, and then the second track would be uh, teachers who are at um, intermediate, uh, or religion teachers, or um, uh, basic catechesis. You can make whatever track you want to. And so you can figure out also, use that filter, and again, export a CSV file. Uh, same thing, the Franciscan tracks are our stock tracks available to anybody. It's the custom tracks that are going to be helpful to you, though. Okay. And then above that, even, you can also, right now you've got all these data. Up here, those particular tabs also will give you specific data on those tracks, on those courses of study, workshops, et cetera. Then the fourth evaluation tool. I'm going to go a little bit more in detail with this one because this is the one that you probably will be demanded of by those above you. And they're going to say, show me the numbers. Show me that this is worth the price that we paid. So this is your fourth tab, and it's the workshop evaluation summary report. Right now, this is in the Diocese of Columbus. And you'll see that there are multiple sections here. I'm going to point this out to you in detail. All right, this is now just the page, the workshop evaluation summary page. So um, I am going to, let's see if I can get into it. Um, hold on. I should be able to connect to the internet here. I should be able to connect to the internet here. There we are. That's where we're going. OK. I'm going to go into franciscanathome.com. I want to show this to you um, because you need to uh, be able to access this yourself. I'm demonstrating it. Again, I'm going to ask you just to hold on on your questions just a little bit. We can always come back to this, OK? Always come back to it. I uh, first need to log in here. I have uh, abilities to log in as anybody. Um, what, what are you laughing at? <laughs> OK. All right, it's called administrative rights, administrator rights, excuse me. So right now, I'm going to go to Columbus again. Uh, let me go in as uh, Teresa. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you this, uh, these tabs about the CSVs where you can find it yourself and generate this, these data. Uh, again, I'm on the Learner Progress tab. Um, when I get to the Learner Progress tab, I'll have the four real-time evaluations. Yes? Uh, are you admitted to the, the Learner Progress tab? Oh, oh man. <laughs> yes, I was. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I am so glad you said that, Father Jacob. You are so smart. OK. Our there we are. Now we're, oh, no, it's still there. Uh, hold on. Let me see if I can end slideshow. There we are. OK, now I'm in. OK, learner progress tab. Uh, cumulative data report is what I just want to highlight for you real fast. If you've never seen this page, when we get to the questions and answer session at the end, we'll come back to the page. I can explain more of it to you. The cumulative data report, I'm scrolling down now. You saw the top part of this in my slide just a little while ago. I'm going to go to the very bottom. Uh, Columbus has so much data. Uh, there, there's an amazing amount of data there. Uh, so 
the two numbers I looked for at the bottom is the number of active learners versus the number of dormant learners. This is why Columbus is at the top right now. You have so many active learners there, uh, which is really amazing. That, in my mind, as a diocesan official, is the number you want to look for readily to give you a measure how well are people engaged, OK? Now, you can specify particular um, institutions and customizable tracks in addition to that. But if you want to get a fast uh, view of how much engagement we have going on, that's the place where you want to go. That's under the cumulative data report. When you go to the individual learner data report, at this point, at the very bottom, there's a small button, CSV. I don't know if you can see it, but that will export all of the data that you are presently searching for. So if I want to find a particular institution, uh, like All Saints Academy, I simply click on All Saints Academy, and it will only export the data for All Saints Academy. OK? And uh, your teachers are really going to want this. Yes? No, go ahead. Please ask now. Is this what? Yes. Uh, we are scaled to mobile devices right now. I'll just say, since it is not an app, you still have to come in through your uh, browser, OK? But it is all scaled to mobile devices, OK? Thanks for asking. All right, and then I'm going to go back here. And the, uh, the last thing that I'll, I just wanted to show those to you, uh, and we will get back to this, is now I'm going to show you the workshop evaluation report. And I'm not going to show it to you live. I'm actually going to go back to my slides because I was able to highlight a few things. And uh, let me highlight here. OK. So this is the workshop evaluation report. And what I wanted to show is the Diocese of Columbus is actually very typical of our entire system. But I wanted to specify for that particular diocese which is now having the highest level of engagement. We have multi-dimensional formation. So human, intellectual or doctrinal, spiritual, and pastoral formation. And you'll see right now we are beyond good and we're approaching excellent in all of our workshops. And what they're saying concerning the usefulness in your spiritual formation the usefulness in gaining catechetical skills, gaining doctrinal understanding, and the relationship of this workshop to daily life. The delivery via video, that is the clarity of the workshop and the presenter's ability to teach, is also at good and heading toward excellent. Okay. What we want is we want to know how demanding is this. And we want to hit it right in the middle, Okay, about right. And you know we are about right in our Catholic adult learning model, which is trusting, tasking, praying, giving, growing. And that's what we're asking here. Concerning mentoring, again, we are at good and approaching excellent concerning Catholic mentoring or disciple making. And then here's what I would call the equation for the gift of the CI approach. We have excellent formation, multidimensional, excellent delivery via video. You add in that about right Catholic adult learning, and what you get are fruitful experiences with the Lord and with one another. Even though you'll see there's a large amount of people who spend five or hours or more doing their formation, but they're not complaining about it because we know that we're hitting about right. And we know that they're evaluating it as excellent, including the mentoring, right? And then if you look at the number down here, did you find the handouts in this workshop beneficial? Most of them, only 9% say no. That means 91% say yes, or somewhat. 
And then did the overall experience of this workshop meet your expectations? Only 4% say no. That means 96% are saying yes or somewhat, which is in the positive category, isn't it? 96%? I think we're doing a pretty good job. OK. So our diocesan partnership, here's how we serve you. We need a partnership letter from your ordinary. Prior to the letter or as a follow-up, we request meetings with your ordinary, the vicar general, and your diocesan officials. We create a customized landing page for you. You can see all the landing pages. They're all visible to everybody on franciscanathome.com under partnering dioceses. We create custom tracks for you. From your dashboard or the about page, you can see the list of all the available workshops uh, that we have, over 200 plus workshops. Um, the all on board is the best practice. We have done the data, and the data say that 96% of all the active learners, so now we have over 37,000 active learners, 96% of them are in dioceses that are all on board. And the reason that happens is because there's a unified momentum. We're all moving together, OK? Not uniformity, unified, because the needs in schools are different than the needs in parishes. The needs in youth ministry are different than the needs in Hispanic ministry. The needs for marriage renewal are different than the needs for those in Eucharistic discipleship, OK? It's a unified approach, but it's not uniform. The CI outreach team events that I talk about, we can either do on-site or Zoom, OK? And I, I know some of you in here, so we're going to do it in different ways. So I'm going to be going to Los Angeles. Uh, at least three times over the next 12 months, okay? But if they need me to come out more, I will. Los Angeles is the largest diocese in the United States, and their decision to partner means that they want to accompany all of their people, and we are committing ourselves to be with them to have that happen, okay? Um, the Let's see, who else do I have here? Um, Oklahoma City. I have not yet been in Oklahoma City, okay? But they're retooling right now. They're refreshing. They're, they're looking at it. But they're one of the earliest partners. And actually, I don't know if I ever mentioned this to you, Katie. I use Oklahoma City as an example over and over and over again. Because really what began at the very beginning there in Oklahoma City, in my opinion, is one of the very best ways to approach things, okay? Um, I have done Zoom events. Uh, all over the country, okay? Um, and that's what we want to make available to you. All of these are free uh, if they are for formation. But if you invite us into a parish and you want me to speak on Eucharistic discipleship, which I love to do, it's one of the highest rated workshops we have, we're going to ask for a stipend for that event, okay? But for the formation events to get you going on your partnership, that's all free, okay? And we want to do these, especially for pastors, um, uh, notwithstanding the wonderful priest who's in our midst. But priests can be a little bit demanding about, <laughs> about whether or not they're in control of something, OK? So, so we really like to present to the priests first, and then they finally get the nod. Yeah, OK, I think this is a good idea. Go ahead. You can do whatever you want. And we don't demand a lot of time with them. We'd love to have a whole day. But we know how busy they are, and if we can get at least an hour, hour and a half, that works out really well. Uh, diocesan leadership, new and ongoing engagement. We want to be there for you. We get started on a partnership. Come, bring us back, OK? We find that that works really well. Later leadership, there's initial and, again, topical in-services, uh, theology of the body, Eucharistic discipleship, um, uh, OCIA, OK? and then cultivating continuous conversion, accompaniment, and disciple making. And then our partnership also means onboarding mentors and leaders. Their initial formation of local existing catechetical leadership, as per number five, see above, and sustained formation. OK, what are the challenges and solutions? What did we find when we did our strategic planning? Well, the first thing, there is a lack of certification structures. If I had to do a, a just a fast survey of those of you here, I don't want to because I don't want anybody to be embarrassed, okay? But 
No diocese is doing the same thing as any other diocese. Okay? It's just not happening. But we find that thriving dioceses have a clear vision and a defined benchmarks of faithfully creative ministry formation. That works. However you want to do it. We're not saying it has to be done a certain way. It's got to be localized. Two, the plug and play mentality. Didactic models of formation are replaced with pastoral accompaniment, dialogical learning, and personal engagement. Plug and play is not going to work anymore. Three, lack of follow-up. Free, semi-annual, or annual follow-up CI events strengthen connections between true video workshops and personal encounters. I thank God for COVID. I know that may sound really, really strange, but the reason I thank God for it is because everybody realized we still needed to communicate with one another, and instead of me physically going to dioceses, I spent most of my time providing formation events via Zoom. And many places it worked. Now I can be on the road and I can be providing follow-up in-person formation events as well as initial formation events. But for us, it's always the combination of the two. The lack of urgency. From the top down, leaders need empowerment to implement the ordinary's vision with incentives and consequences. That is the hardest thing for us to do in ministry is to let somebody go. It's so hard, but it has to happen, okay? Five, discouragement. Certificates, ceremonies, recognition overcome discouragement in ministry. And then number six, the gap of understanding. Thriving dioceses properly communicate the church's understanding of good catechesis, formation, and accompaniment. So I'm going to show you a new health meter that we've just created. We found that the following practices with a CI partnership address effectively or at least mitigate and make manageable the challenges below. Have your diocesan team please rate your approach on a scale of 1 to 10 that is non-existent to presently, uh, strongly present on these 32 items. Then meet with the CI outreach team member to review and to plan strategically for mission effectiveness. Let me tell you what the five categories are and then I'm gonna show you the new health meter. The categories are just like what we did with the challenges and strengths. So partnership direction is determined. Diocesan clergy are involved and supported. Diocesan leaders are involved and supported. Lay leaders and principals are involved and supported. And ministry formation structures are developed. What I'm going to show you now is not in your handout because uh, we have not finalized it, but I'm going to show it to you right now. And this will be the occasion for us to have conversations. It becomes the occasion also for you to do strategic planning of objectives and strategies. So again, I've just kind of read for you, uh, use the scale of one to 10. Um, uh, actually, we've just put in a field here. This field changes for whatever day you're doing it. We're expecting a relationship to last longer than a year. So each year, I will be, or our strategic partnership liaison fellow will be evaluating with you your relationship and how it's going so that we can identify action items for the next year and the strategies to take to get to those items. So first point, just to give you an idea, a thorough intake interview is conducted by a member of the CI outreach team. It provides a basic assessment of the present evaluation needs and deliverables in a diocese, and these needs are evaluated on an annual basis. So over here in this category, you would put in the date when that happens, and then over here, you put the rating of how well it happens. When we send this to you, which we will, we're not gonna, we don't have it ready today, it will be in a PDF format so that these are fields that you can fill in. And under the actions and by whom, this will be a field also that you can fill in because it could be really long and it'll expand on its own, okay? And you could say for 2023, these are the action items we're gonna take and these are the persons who are responsible for it. If you don't identify who's responsible for the action, it'll never get done. There's gotta be an accountability system 
within the diocese, okay? So let me just give you a second one. A letter from the diocesan ordinary establishes a partnership between the diocese and the CI. No financial commitment is attached to the writing of such a letter. So you should have a date when that comes in. You should be able to say, yep, this is done. We got a 10, all taken care of. And then underneath that, where it comes actions by whom, bada bing, bada boom, it's all done, okay. Uh, a meeting with diocesan ordinary and relevant leadership takes place on site or video conferencing, et cetera. Okay, you get the idea? Let me take it down. I'm gonna go down a little bit farther. And this is where we go into even more detail. And this becomes the area where we help you strategize for best practices. So leaders of relevant groups participate in CI formation partnership on-site or video conference launch events. That is day-long CI formation trio. Best practice is to hold separate launch events for different ministries. So you have one for PCLs, one for youth ministers, one for principals, in order to respond to particular needs of those ministries in depth. I give you the basic idea here, but over in the left-hand column, you could identify this under the actions. We're gonna do schools on this day, principals here. We're gonna do youth ministers here. We're gonna do PCLs here. That's the way we're gonna create this tool so you've got something to keep track of it and you rate it off to the right side, okay? And then underneath, in providing the free CI formation partnership launch events with a significant amount of time and tone on the following. How do you discover the real needs, urgencies? We use a listening exercise called SWOT, Strengths, Weaknesses, Opportunities, and Threats. I give you the results of all the SWOT and that becomes for you your um, uh, your uh, data by which to strategize how are we going to meet these. Um, focus on the spiritual growth rather than only on functionality and roles. This is the least done, but we find it the most needed action. What are you doing? Here's the date. How would you rate it right now? Because maybe in the future, you're really hoping right now it's at a number three. Man, can we get this up to five, et cetera, okay? So this is the new tool that we're using based on what we've heard from the field and what really works. Okay, I'm almost to the end here, and then uh, I'll let you go on the uh, questions. Uh, let me see, health meter. Um, and then uh, lastly, uh, again, I'm using Green Bay here, Bishop Ricken just sent us this endorsement. Just to let you know, other dioceses, Bishop Fernandez just sent his endorsement, thank you. Uh, we have other dioceses coming in. Actually, we have a wonderful endorsement from Archbishop Coakley also. Um, so we have many dioceses sending their endorsements right now because we want to share with the rest of the world all of the wonderful good news that's taking place by our service to y'all. So Bishop Ricken says, I'm most grateful for the ministry and efforts of the Catechetical Institute of Franciscan University of Steubenville. They've been on the cutting edge of forming catechetical leaders and others of the faithful in a charismatic catechesis that is life-giving and life-changing. Their ministry is a vital service to the church, especially at this juncture of history. Therefore, it's my wish to affirm my support for the Catechetical Institute and to endorse their efforts. And then we have uh, Gwen here at Sacred Heart Parish in the Diocese of Venice. She says, I'm not only working through the workshops, I'm loving the workshops. I've learned so much and been so inspired by what I've learned so far. I'm looking forward to elective courses that are possible. Thanks for finding the program and making it possible at such a small charge for the parishes. I am most grateful. So how may we help you to form those who form others in the faith? And we remain at your service, and you remain in our prayers. Thank you for your attention today.